What's up guys? It's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity Build-Up video. Today we're going to be doing the high-level portion of this Contest to Mayors 2022 guide. This is part three. I uploaded part two and part one yesterday. Hopefully we can finish up the rest of what we have to go through uh, in part three. If not, then there will be a part four. This is pretty much going to be an overall gist of everything that you need to know to play calm competitively using my technique. Okay. There is a lot to it. You, there's a lot of videos you're going to have to watch. You're going to have to watch walkthroughs. It's going to take practice. So don't get frustrated thinking that, you know, you're just going to watch one video and become a pro. That's not quite how it works. It's definitely something that takes time to learn. Okay. So before we begin, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, we're almost to 3,000 subscribers. If you guys are not yet a member of our Facebook page and group, go ahead and type in SimCity Build It Missy NYT into Facebook, and you'll see a page and a group. If you hit like on the page and join on the group, you'll have access to all of our files, and you can ask questions or whatever. Okay, so now that we've got all that out of the way, you guys... The descriptions on the other videos have not been uploaded yet. I have not completed this guide 100% yet. I want to get some of the recordings done so that I can fill in the links. Okay. Um, do not print this guide yet. Give it time. Once you see a description in the video and a thumbnail on this video, that means the guide is done. That's just the way I'm going to do it this time. Okay. The other thing is, is that this is also a low level guide as well. So if you're a low level player, you're going to read the low level portions. Also, if you're a high level player, for you low level players, I am going to be recording the same type of thing, but for low level, but it's not going to be in this particular video. The very uh, first portion of the document is an introduction explaining if you're a high or low level player. If you're on a mobile device and the words look all jumbled, all you have to do is click the top right corner, the three dots, hit print layout, and it will fix everything and align everything. Mine looks fine because it's in the landscape mode, but if you're holding your phone upright, it's going to be all jumbled. Okay, so we were at the portion of the document where we had went through all of the contest mayor's assignments and were going through their algorithms and their risks and the rules and all that. Now, we are, and by the way, the reason it's taken me so long is one, this guide is very uh, intense to say the least, but I have also have been playing Tiny Tina's Wonderland since it came out yesterday, so that is partially why I am slacking. Okay, calm prep for high level players. There will be vid video links, sorry, video links for you guys in this portion. I will be putting them at the, the bottom part of the comm prep. We're going to kind of go through the basics because, honestly, a lot of people, and especially high-level players, they do not prep all the stuff that they should. They think that comm prep means items in some shops. No, there is so much more to it than that. So we're going to go over the gist of it and make sure that you guys follow this prep the best that you can because it really does make all the difference when it comes to clearing your assignments as quickly as possible. So, comp prep for high-level players. Always prepare electrical first. Now, a lot of you guys prepare sugar or feed or I don't know what. Don't do that. I always prep electrical, okay? And the reason being is because it takes the longest and it can be worth the most points. And I usually end up getting it within the first 20 assignments if I'm going to get it at all. You can prep whatever you want, but I prep electrical, and I recommend you do the same, okay? If you do not get this task done in the first 20 to 25 assignments and it comes in in the main list, make sure that you leave it to sit until after the streaks and prep something that is not in your main list. So, for example, let's say that you're going to bed, okay? You're 20 to 25 assignments in already. You have uh, electrical already not it doesn't matter if it's in the main list not in the main list whatever let's say it's not in the main list don't prep electrical because if it does pop up in your main list you're not going to do it until after the streaks so what you would want to do is you would want to prep something else 
Okay. And then, you know, maybe... I mean, you can prep electrical, but... If it's in the main list, since you're not going to be doing it, you're probably going to end up picking it up and prepping something else. I would prep something that could pop up in the streaks. Okay? Now, let's say that uh, you're just before the streaks, and you guys are... You, you have electrical secured, you're just before the streaks, you haven't started the streaks yet, and you're going to sleep. Prep something that is not in your main list so that if it comes in, in the streaks, it's already done. There's no sense in prepping something that's in your main list if you're not gonna do it until after the streaks, right? Also make sure that when you begin your streaks that you do not have factory productions prepping, like actually taking time. Make sure that they're ready for pickup. Because what's going to happen is, let's say that you throw down a bunch of feed, and then you start streak one, and you get metal. You're not going to be able to do it. So don't do that. You know, Make sure that your, your factories are available to you if they need to be, but that you have the, the longest item prepped. If you have the time to prep it. If you don't, then you're just going to have to leave your factories wide open for those assignments. Okay. Part of prepping isn't always the way you prep right before the contest. It's how you prep your stuff during the contest. There's a lot of ways that you can slow yourself down majorly by not making sure that things are lined up. And the, for high level players, the biggest problem for you guys is gonna be regionals and factories. Okay, now low level players, factories are a nightmare for them because they don't have as many slots, but you guys have the slots to do them in one round. So getting certain things prepped at the right time is going to be essential for you guys. Regionals is going to be the number one thing that is the biggest issue. Coins, tasks, regional HQ, you know, things closing down and timers, that's going to be your biggest concern. So the next thing is prepping all your regional shops with the longest regional items or a 50-50 split of medium and large regionals. A lot of you guys probably don't prep your regional shops at all because the items that it takes to prep them cost a lot. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to prep all of all 11 items at the exact uh, same time. Because if you don't, then what's going to happen is you're going to go to your regional map and you're not going to be able to lay any more down without picking it up unless your inventory is full. So if you run in that situation, make sure your inventory is full. Okay. On the capital map, you can use a trick by clicking a different shop and using the yellow arrow so you don't have to pick up the items. But on your regional map, you're going to have to either make sure your inventory is full or that you lay all 11 items down beforehand. Given that the regional items, the long ones, take three plus hours to make, that's a lot of downtime even if you use tokens. If you get a uh, regional shop assignment, you're going to want to make sure that you're prepped for that. I usually just prep the longest one, uh, but if you want to, you can do like a 50-50 split or something. Okay, the next one is all your capital shops should be prepped with either the longest item or the items that are most likely to pop up for a task. So, you know, you can prep fire pits, yogurts, things like that, whatever you think that you might get an assignment for. Some people notice that they get assignments for certain, you know, uh, I items more than others. Just make sure that you aren't prepping stuff that doesn't take hardly any time. There's no point in prepping planks. I mean, even if you get planks, they don't take very long. So prep something that takes a while. Something that can also be useful to you if you have to pick it all up, like paint, for example. Not only is paint very useful, but it's, uh, you know, it takes a while to make. I would not prep cupboards because the cupboards assignment is not something that you get very frequently and it takes a lot of your good resources to prep that. The reason that you would want to prep something like yogurt or fire pits is because they take a long damn time to make. So if you do get the assignment for it, at least uh, you're prepared for that. Now, usually what I do when it comes to the yogurt shop, which would be the donut store, or the garden store for fire pits, I usually prep half fire pits and then half yogurt in the donut shop and then I prep something else in the donut shop. Maybe uh, could be, I usually don't do smoothies to be honest. I usually do bread rolls and uh, yogurt 
because I usually get an assignment for either one of those. But at least if I prep half yogurt, I've cut out half my downtime, which is pretty nice. So if I prep six yogurt, I've saved one, about one and a half gold tokens. So I've saved myself almost two hours of downtime, which is nice, right? So make sure that if you prep something that you're, you're saving yourself a lot of time or um, that you're, you're gonna benefit from being able to collect that item. Now, I usually prep, um, I, I don't usually prep backpacks in the fashion store just because I don't normally get that assignment, but I do make a lot of backpacks before the contest because I need them for, you know, repairs and things like that. Normally I prep something like shoes or suits or, uh, what else, what else, what else? Can't think of the name. Caps sometimes, but normally it's, it's suits or shoes. It also depends on how much glue I have available for you know, my regionals. Usually my, my glue goes to like flip-flops or yoga mats, or I don't know if yoga mats, but you know, whatever it is, other things that I could be making. Okay, so let's see here. Make sure that you have at least 800,000 coins if you're a high level player. Now, this is a higher amount, you know, this is like to be really, really safe. You don't have to have 800,000 coins. But I'm a level 99 player. I have all five regional maps unlocked. And I'm going to tell you right now, the last three weeks that I played Com competitively, it cost me 800,000 coins. That's with a well-stocked inventory. So just be aware of that. And if you're a war player, it's going to cost you even more. Several hundred cash. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you have cash because uh, of flights and things like that. Okay, plenty of tokens. You guys should have plenty of gold and silver tokens stacked up to make sure that you can do your assignments quickly. Anytime that you get a production assignment, you should be putting it on some kind of a token. You cannot afford to just sit around and wait. The whole purpose is that you move as quickly and as efficiently as possible to get done as fast as you possibly can. Not only does this ensure that if you do fall into a situation where you have a lot of downtime, that you can... Uh, afford to take it but because you're going to be opening up your regional HQs it's even more essential that you move as quickly as possible and you also have the rest of the week off where you can play casually you can re uh, rebuild up your coins and then you have the whole week to do whatever you want but if you're just somebody who's just going to blow through your assignments going as quickly as you can and not playing as efficiently and then you just end up losing in the end that's a complete waste Make sure that you guys are playing 100% efficient. If you have to take downtime, then you have to take downtime, but don't take downtime that doesn't have to be taken. So in that case, if you have shop productions and you can speed them up, you should. Now, obviously you're not gonna throw like a gold token on hammers or something, but you can put a silver token on it, you know, get it done four times faster. Okay, prepare Omega items to hold your max, Pair Omega items to hold your maximum capacity. I'm going to have to rephrase that. That sounds weird. Basically what I mean is that whatever the maximum capacity is on your Omega item bank, you're going to prepare all of your canisters and make sure that your Omega is full. So for mine, it is 35 items. So I make sure that I have 35 items in my Neo bank, and then I have all my canister is ready for pickup. And then I have the three that I can hold and then the five that I can make. So I have eight canisters ready, one making, and then my 35 items. Omega has a pretty decent algorithm attached to it. And a lot of players will end up in a situation where they don't make their canisters. They don't keep up on their Neo bank. This not only sets them back a little bit because then they don't get Neocoin offers unless their Neobank is at least 75% full, roughly. And they put, they're put in a position where when they get an assignment to upgrade uh, an Omega house, they probably don't have the item and they have to sit there and watch ads or wait 30 minutes, which is just downtime that you can't afford to take. So make sure that your stuff is prepped. Okay, that is really, really, really important. I see so many people that will be, uh, I'll be like flipping through their week of choices and I'll see they have like eight 
Omega items and they've just been getting Omega um, upgrades back to back, you know, constantly throughout the contest as they repeat tasks. And you can just see their Omega stuff going up like three and then three. It's like, don't do that. Don't put yourself in that position. Make sure that your stuff's full. Okay. All right. Go through every single map and refresh all upgrades until they cost a decent price slash re, uh, reasonable items. Now, this should be done throughout the week and throughout the contest. So basically, and I've talked about this in a lot of the videos that I'm going to be linking you guys, but you're going to go through every one of your maps and you're going to look at the upgrades, see what it's asking for. Let's say that you're on Green Valley and one of your upgrades is asking for three yoga mats. Well, when you end up getting an upgrade uh, Green Valley house and you go over there and you see that you have the materials, usually most players, they just poof, do the upgrade. They don't even see what it's going to cost. Don't put yourself in a position where you're going to be wasting resources you don't have to waste. You should not be spending that kind of uh, regional items on your upgrades. So go through and refresh anything that is ex expecting too many regional items or is expecting too uh, too many good items or expensive or whatever. Just refresh everything, okay? Same thing is going to be for your regional bubbles. You're going to go through your regional coin offers on every one of your maps. And when you get to one that is decent, you're going to stop messing with it and you're going to leave it to sit. It will be there as long as you don't use the, those regional items. That offer will be there when you go back. Okay, keep all your regional HQs closed until you get the task. Now, the number one thing that happens to high-level players is they travel to their regional map, maybe before the contest or even during the contest, and they accidentally open their regional HQ. That is the worst thing, okay? Trust me, I know your pain. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, I try to avoid even going to my regional maps, and I try to avoid that entire section of the screen if I haven't yet opened up the regional HQ. So the way that it works is your regional HQ timer does not start until you click on the regional HQ. Okay, once you click on it, that 24 hour timer begins. When you complete that 24 hours, you have a time frame until the next, uh, until it opens up again. That time frame is gonna be different every single time. And the way that you know that time frame is gonna be by clicking on the piggy bank. When you click on the piggy bank, it tells you how long that offer is good for. That offer is good until the regional HQ resets. So let's say that I accidentally opened up my regional HQ the day before the contest. That means the day of the contest, that 24 hours will have went by and I'll be uh, just waiting until it refreshes. So I click on the piggy bank and it tells me I have three and a half days. That means that that regional HQ will not be open until three and a half days. Okay, so I know that I'm screwed. Now, it could be one and a half days. Always go and look at your piggy bank timer to see how long you have to wait for it to refresh. Try not to open up your regional HQs until you absolutely have to. And once you do open them up, depending on how many regional uh, maps that you have will determine how important it is that you move really, really quick. For example, if you only have one or two regional maps and you have both HQs open and you're slacking, you could end up really screwing yourself. You could get uh, do regional HQ shipment in the streaks. How are you going to do it? You can't. So you might have to leave that, that uh, assignment to sit if you're lucky enough to get it in the main list. But so many players, they just go out on a limb and they just do that assignment without thinking about it. And then they fail the streak and then their entire week's trash. Okay, so be very aware of how many regional HQs that you have open. And don't slack off once they are open. Don't take unnecessary downtime. All right, the next one. Uh, war cards, keys, boosters, you need to make sure all that stuff is available. You need to make sure that you have enough war cards to do the war card upgrade and that you have enough keys to upgrade the cards. Same thing with boosters. You want to make sure that you have at least one of every booster so that if you get that assignment, you can do it. 50 of each VU minimum for you high level players. Try to aim for that, okay? Check airport timers and send away any that don't line up with your contest. 
So you're going to go to your airport, and if it says that Tokyo doesn't arrive for, uh, let's say, 10 hours, and the contest of mayors begins in, like, you know, 12 hours or something, um, that would be lined up pretty decent. But if your flight doesn't leave for 10 hours and calm begins in 12 hours, then that means that you're going to be in that downtime by the time contest begins anyways. So you might as well send it away, and that way you're a lot closer to it by the time the contest begins. And hopefully by the time you get that assignment, you'll actually be able to do it without having to pay for it. So try to line your timers up to match up with the contest. Okay? Have a minimum of three... Wait, that's low level. <laughs> All right, that covers your comm prep. Now, how to select your assignments. This is comm math. So basically, you know, I have a lot of videos on comm math, and we're not going to get into a lot of it today, but we're going to briefly touch base on it. All comm math really is is a basically a formula template for you guys to follow to make sure that you guys are thinking of every possible uh, scenario and every possible variable. So, for example, um, Formula 1, if you're looking at your entire list, anything that is 1,500 points or higher is going to be value up, okay? Same thing with value opportunity. Then you're going to go through and you're going to mark each one with opportunity, after you've narrowed it down to maybe two or three assignments that you know are the right choice, you're then going to mo move to formula two. And in this case, you erase value, you erase value opportunity, and you erase, erase opportunity. Okay. And now you're comparing value against the tasks. And usually you can get it down to two tasks. So it's task a task versus task comparison. So it's not 1,500 points value up now. Now it's which one has the highest value compared to this assignment. So if it's a war delivery for 3,000 versus a monster for 2,500, then war delivery would have value up. Monster would have value down because we're comparing it to that task specifically, not against an entire list, right? Now, which one brings spread better opportunity? The war delivery or the monster? Well, obviously the war delivery, right? So it's got value up, value opportunity is higher, and opportunity is higher. So right there, in in just those short three, we can pretty much determine that that's probably going to be the right choice, right? Now, we still want to go through all the scenarios because there are scenarios where certain things might be better to leave sit versus others. For example, let's say that it's a monster 2500 versus 2400 sugar. Well, sugar doesn't have very good opportunity. It's better than monster, but the algorithm is still high. So what else do we have to consider? Risk? Okay, what's our risk? Well, it depends. How many, how many assignments do we have left? Are we close to the streaks? What's the downtime? Downtime is four hours on sugar. Okay. So we've got a four hour downtime. Let's say that we are just before the streaks. Can we afford to do it? How many days are left? So time remaining, that's why that's important. All right, what's the value difference? 100 points. So we're talking about 100 points for a little bit better opportunity, four hours of downtime with the risk of it coming back repeatedly in the streaks. Now, depending on how much time is left can determine whether or not that risk is gonna to be too risky. So we may not be doing monster or sugar, but if we have enough time, then yeah, we will. So what else do we look at? The history of the assignment. Have we done sugar multiple times? If we have, that means that the odds of us doing it multiple times in the streaks is gonna be even higher than it already is. What about what's going on in our game? The game category. Well, what if we have something else prepped already? Like, let's say we have electrical prepped and it's not in the list. Well, wouldn't we want to leave the electrical, being said it takes double the amount of time, it's already prepped, it's not in the main list, and then start streaks? You know, all of these things matter. So it really is going to depend on all these different variables. What time of day is it for you? Are you going to bed soon? You know, um, 
Is the monster even there, or is it going to cost you cash? You can't afford to do the monster multiple times. That is the whole purpose in this. What? If, okay, how about the fact that um, they're both non-premium? What if, what if one was premium? That means it has a higher value possibility. So see why all this stuff matters? And what, what's happening with a lot of the players is that they're just comparing value and opportunity. They're saying, you know what? This is a premium assignment. It's got good value, and it has a good chance of bringing something good in. So they just go with that. They don't look at anything else. And that is where you guys are screwing up big time. Okay? So you're going to go through each one of these. That's basically your calm math. You look at the entire list of assignments. You use Formula One to pick out which assignments it comes down to. Like, you know it's going to be one of these three. Once you have the ones that you know it's going to be, like it's going to be this one or this one, you then look at all of your categories and you weigh out your options. You go with the highest, the highest assignment with the best opportunity and the least amount of risk. Least amount of downtime. You know, you look at everything, okay? Once you weigh out your options, then you've learned how to narrate your week. And so in that case, you can follow your storyline. How many of you guys actually do this? Probably very few, right? How often do you really sit there and look at your, your list and go, okay, this is my downtime. This assignment's going to come back a whole bunch. This one has the ability to be worth this much. Well, this is risky because of that. And it, it's a lot. Okay, it really is. Okay. So I highly recommend that if you have not, that you seriously go watch the calm math videos to get the hang of how to do it. And even if you know what the answer is, still try to practice the calm math. Okay, if you're opening up your main list and the first assignment is a upgrade war card, and you know that's the first assignment, look at your calm math and say, okay, why is that the right choice? And explain it to yourself in your head why it's correct. Well, it's quick, easy, 3,000 points, good opportunity, uh, no downtime, no risk. Value possibility is always 3,000. Algorithm is pretty low, so you don't have to worry about it just coming back a whole bunch. I mean, go through it with yourself and keep refreshing your your memory on what assignments are uh, premium, non-premium, what their risks are, algorithm, because you're not just going to be able to remember it just from reading it one time on the guide, okay? And like I said, it's not just what's in the guide. It's what's going on in your game specifically. That is why so many people will be like, well, this guy had this list, this same list, but you told him to do something different. It's because it was his game, not yours. Tasks remaining were different. Time remaining was different. Was it bedtime for him? What was the history of the assignments for him? Your history would have been different. What about doorways? Is that his good doorway? Is that his bad doorway? You know, can he afford to do this assignment? Is he somebody that maybe he's having a weird week and he, one of his regional HQs is closed. Maybe he already had the, the fish coins three times and now he's got it again. So for you, it would be the right choice, but for him, it's not. And that is what a lot of people don't grasp. They're just like, but I want a tool that tells me that if I'm in this situation, that this is what I do. It doesn't work that way. Okay. That is probably the most important thing that you're going to learn about the contest is that right there. Is that you have to look at everything. And a lot of people just don't really know how to do that. Okay. This is an example of how the contest of mayor's math works. Okay, so I go through and I explain it to you guys. And that is the end of the document, I believe. So that covers everything that you need to know to play calm decently. You know, you got your calm prep, you got your math, you got what you need to know about each assignment, task assessment, uh, breakdown. All that good stuff, okay? Order of rotation, rules of rotation. Refresh your memory, print the guide. Well, don't print it yet, but...
once you see the description and the thumbnail uploaded, then the guide will be done. Okay. Good luck to you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or video requests, you can put them in the comment section. I will be, uh, like I said, uploading video links to this. Some of them will be older videos just because the advice still works, you know, the nothing's been updated. I just wanted to give you guys a fresh look at the contest mayor's guide with all updated information because when the original ones were written, uh, there was no streaks. So a lot of, you know, techniques have changed because of that. So I'm giving you guys all updated video docs, okay?